Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to find the radius of the smaller circle. The square has side length 2 and the larger circle has a radius of 3. Find the radius of the smaller circle. At this point, you can go ahead and pause the video and try the problem yourself first. Okay, let's take a look. So we have a large circle here with radius 3 and a square with side length 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark some of the centers here like this and then this is like a point of tangency that's another point of tangency those points are going to be important as we calculate you know the lengths so let's go ahead and make these connections here okay first of all i i'm going to draw the radius here and then i'm going to connect the centers of the two circles going through the point of tangency like this Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw a perpendicular line here. And then I'm just going to make a horizontal line here that goes through the point of tangency again, like this. Okay, and then let's mark some of the lengths that are given. For example, oh, I can also connect these two because that will also be important, like this. That's, again, a point of contact. Uh, and um, what else can I do? Okay, I can just go ahead and extend the side length for the square, and it's going to look like this, okay? All right, a lot of connections. Let's see what the lengths are. So we don't know the radius of the smaller circle, so let's call that R. So this will be R, this will be R as well, this will be R as well, okay? What else do we know? Okay, we know that this is uh, 3 here, and then since the side length for the square is 2, uh, this is going to be 1, okay? That's actually very critical because that's going to allow us to calculate one of the legs of this right triangle. Let me go ahead and shade that for you, okay? This one, that's critical. And then uh, we're going to use that length here. We're going to apply it uh, to this situation as well, okay? All right, so I got all my important points. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate some of the lengths. Uh, first of all, we know that this is r, and uh, from Pythagorean theorem, obviously, let's call this point A and this point B. AB will be 2 root 2, right? Okay. Uh, and if you call this C and D, CD will also be 2 root 2, right? CD will also be 2 root 2 because they are basically sides of a rectangle. And then uh, I know that this is R, so the piece that's left over is going to be 2 root 2 minus r, since the whole thing is 2 root 2, and this is r, and um, so for example, let's say, uh, if you call this point E, AE is 2, because it's the side length of the square, so this is going to be 2 minus r, okay? I'll go ahead and rewrite it in a nicer way, 2 minus r, okay, so that length is 2 minus r, now we know that this whole thing is 3, uh, so the hypotenuse here is going to be, for example, if you consider the larger square, I'm sorry, a larger rectangle, mm, larger triangle, I mean, okay, uh, then it's going to have a hypotenuse of 3 plus r. That's what I'm going to use here, actually. So this length is going to be here 3 minus r, okay, and then this is going to be, the hypotenuse is going to be, so let's call this point f, af is going to be, 3 plus r, and the cf is going to be 2 root 2 minus r, okay? And as you can see here, uh, and we didn't, I think, the only point we didn't mark was O, let's call this O, OCF is a right triangle, I can go ahead and dot it for you, this is the dotted triangle I'm talking about, okay? That's a right triangle, and we know uh, all the lengths in terms of r. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem in that right triangle, okay? So, let's start with OC. Uh, OC is equal to 3 minus R, so it's going to be 3 minus R squared plus CF, which is 2 root 2 minus R squared, and that is equal to OF squared, which is, uh, we wrote that here, I think. Um, I thought we did. Okay. 
Where did we write the three plus R? Okay, looks like we haven't written that down. Oh, I wrote o AF, it should be OF, I'm sorry. Okay, this should be OF, not AF. Okay, here we go. OF is three plus R, okay? So that'll be three plus R quantity squared. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna use our usual trick, put the three minus R squared on the other side like this, okay? So let me go ahead and subtract it this way. And then, as you know, a plus b squared minus a minus c, a minus a plus b squared minus a minus a a minus b squared is four ab. So this is going to equal two root two minus r squared is equal to four times three times r, which is twelve r. Okay. So we get this equation, and then let's go ahead and expand this one. It's going to be eight minus four root two r plus r squared. And that's going to equal 12r. Let's put everything on the same side and make it a quadratic. r squared minus 4 root 2 plus 12 times the quantity r plus 8 is equal to 0. Okay, so we got our quadratic and we're going to be solving for r. So let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. And that's going to give us the radius of the smaller circle. Okay, so I'm going to set up my equation r equals negative b. As you know, the formula, we use that a lot in geometry puzzles. Plus minus, and I'm going to later on talk about which one we pick. Square root of b squared, so that's going to be 4 root 2 plus 12. Squared minus 4ac, which is 4 times 8. In this case, it'll be 32. And don't worry, things are going to simplify nicely here. Once we expand it, this is going to be 4 root 2 plus 12 plus minus. Inside the radical, I have another perfect square. Let's go ahead and expand it. It's going to be 96 root 2 plus 144 minus 32, okay, divided by 2a, which is in this case 2. And these two terms are going to cancel out. Now, inside the radical, I do have 96 and 144. Obviously, I can just go ahead and factor some numbers out of it. And the, the greatest common factor is going to be, let's see. Uh, I think I can take out a 12, uh, that, that's going to give me 12 and 8. How about a 24? 24 is going to give me 4 and 6, so that means I can take out a 48. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I can pull out a 48 here inside the radical. And now I'm going to have 2 root 2 plus 3, which is nice. Okay, that's actually fairly simple. We're going to take care of that uh, later. Okay, now square root of 48 is uh, 16 times 3, so it's going to be 4 root 3. So I can write the r as 4 root 2 plus 12 plus minus 4 root 3. I just separated that factor. And then now I have the square root of 3 plus 2 root 2. Now, if you remember uh, in one of the previous problems, we actually uh, solved radicals like this uh, using the shortcut. And the shortcut was if there's a 2 in front of the uh, innermost radical, then we basically just factor the 2 out. Um, we're looking for two numbers whose product is 2 and whose sum is 3. So that's the critical part. And those numbers are 2 and 1. So the answer is going to be square root of 2 plus the square root of 1, which is just 1. And if you expand this, actually, if you square square root of 2 plus 1, you're going to get the exact same expression. So I can write this as r equals 4 root 2 plus 12 plus minus 4 root 3 multiply by root 2 plus 1. And all of that is divided by 2. Okay, we're almost there. Let's go ahead and simplify this as much as we can. Now, since we have two solutions here, I'm just going to go ahead and um, split them up. Uh, let's start with the positive solution first. Plus, I'm going to distribute uh, 4 root 3 over the root 2 plus 1. That's going to give me 4 root 6, all positive, remember, plus 4 root 3, all divided by 2. And that's going to equal, none of these terms are like terms, so it's going to be like, if you divide everything by 2, 6 plus 2 root 6 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 2. Okay, that's going to be one of my solutions. So you can call that R1 if you want. Let's call that R1. And then R2 is going to look like this, 4 root 2 plus 12 minus 4 root 6 minus 4 root 3. i got to do it carefully, divided by 2. And if I simplify that, it's going to look like 6 minus 2 root 6 minus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 2. Now, 
we have R1 and R2, we have two solutions, but the radius can only be one value here. And notice that the radius is definitely s smaller than two, probably, I mean, not probably, but looks like it's even smaller than one, okay? So we're gonna look for the smaller solution. If you consider R1, R1 is fairly large. It's obviously greater than six. And if you calculate this number approximately, it's gonna give you a number between uh, zero and one. Uh, you're going to notice that if you approximate it, like, for example, this is pretty close to 2.4, okay, and this is close to 1.7, this is close to 1.4. That's going to be good enough. If you go ahead and calculate that, it's going to be like 6 minus 4.8 minus 3.4 plus 1.4. These two are going to make 7.8.2, and this is going to make 8.4, and their difference is going to be approximately 0 0.2, which makes a lot of sense because we know that the number is actually less than 1. Okay, so that's gonna be our answer. The radius of the smaller circle is gonna be this value. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment, like, and let me know what you think about the video, if there's any alternative solutions, and see you in the next video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.